head off and I will do my best to see if we can get back on schedule uh, with this. So um, yes, obviously, well, hello, welcome to my talk. Um, da, 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 let's see. Uh, yes, there we go. Hello, uh, my name is Nathan Hughes. I am a third year EE student. Uh, I'm based at York and um, I'm really interested in sort of mythical critiques, um, especially for this talk, I'm talking about questionnaires. Um, and if you wanted to know me in a nutshell, this verbatim quote from my supervisor who is not here today, so he can't stop me from quoting him, <laughs> is that I'm someone mad enough to do that. And the that in question is what will become apparent uh, from this talk. So I guess I'll I sort of start with the, the problem here, which is there is a lot of questionnaires uh, if you're trying to measure player differences. Um, when I say player differences, I mean traits, motivations, preferences, this sort of thing, which is a problem for a maturing field, which games is. Um, and when I say a lot, I mean, you, you could just believe me, but also <laughs> this is the list that I'm dealing with, uh, which is 18 questionnaires. Um, so therefore you can say, well, that's, that's definitely a lot. Like how on earth do people do anything with that? But the first interesting question would just be, you know, why are there so many, you know, what is, what has happened in our field? <laughs> so I would say one, um, sort of way to look at this is if you think about the fact that there's hand wavy, I could say there's about four disciplines within player research. So you have sort of very generally games researchers, um, very much just looking at what is it about games that are unique? They're like, we don't care about the fields games. What is, what is going on here? Which is in contrast to the psychologists, which is actually my own background, um, which is sort of saying, okay, well, we have all these behavioral theories about people. How do we get them in um, to this new domain? Because games are a new, fun, exciting thing to look at. And similarly to this, you have uh, media studies who again have their own theories from films, books, all that sort of stuff. And they've said, hey, hey, games are really cool. Maybe we should look into that. So then they've also applied forward. And finally, sort of a newer field that's sort of coming through is sort of education. You know, oh, people have a lot of fun in games. They have a lot of fun learning in games. How can we make learning more fun? So what can we learn from games and apply across? But I would say the one thing that they have in common is that each of them quite frequently, and I will make them use and create both questionnaires, which is the, the point of this talk, which is, it's, that's great, you know, it's really nice to have a very multidisciplinary field, uh, but it does create a few problems. So we have no standard practice for questionnaire reporting or creation because we're all basically doing our own thing. You know, we have different priorities about what we think is important to both um, making questionnaires and also reporting how they're used. And we also don't tend to talk too much. I mean, obviously we see each other at conferences, but in terms of fields, it's not that we actually have a lot of time um, connecting together. And these different priorities are influencing what we report when we use questionnaires and also, you know, why we use them. So because of this, we don't actually know what everyone is doing half the time. If we say that the psychologists are over here doing their own thing and the media people are over here, we don't know what they're doing and we don't know how they're doing it if we don't have a standard practice for using questionnaires. So we actually can't build on each other um, as a unified field. So I would argue that if you want to fix this, um, basically be more transparent about how we use questionnaires and in a standardized way would be the solution. Um, a clarification for good measure is that I'm not saying that the researchers in these different fields don't care about these criteria that I'm gonna talk about, but they just have different views on what is relevant for other people to know because of the, you know these different disciplinary practices. But as this field is maturing, we really do need to start building on everybody, not just our own field and our own work. And therefore we need some sort of common language for us to actually gravitate our work around. So again, I say transparency and standardization would solve this. So what is good practice? <laughs> what is good reporting practice? Um, well, there's a lot of ways you could look at this, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm basically taking eight criteria of transparency and I'm just going to bang through really quickly. Um, first good point, is this the correct citation? Or importantly, actually the version, because some questionnaires do have more than one where the items change. Um, have I justified the use of this specific questionnaire? Because as we saw, there's at least 18 of them. Why did you choose this one and not any of the others? How many Likert points did you use? Um, sort of just more of a, a general one. It's just that it, they do, it can vary between the original versus others, and it might not have too much of an impact, but it's still a nice part of information to know. Um, have I provided examples of items? So do or, does the reader know what, the, what has been asked of participants? Can the reader tell if the items have been dropped in any way? So if the original scale had 20 items, does it still have 20 items or did any sort of droppage happen there? Uh, and similarly, can you tell if the items have been reworded? Because that does happen if you're looking at a specific game, something like that. 
And really nice sort of like all together here, we've got reliability. As a psychologist, that's sort of my my personal uh, preference to have a reliability, just to see that is this sample comparable to the sample that the, the questionnaire came from. And to catch it all together, basically all the items available in the text, the appendix online, maybe on the open science framework, um, just so you can actually see the items and see what was asked of participants. And basically, I'm going to use these eight criteria um, to analyze current reporting practices. So that leads me to my present study, which I call a meta-analysis with extra steps. Um, basically, how do I assess the eight criteria? Well, I basically looked at how researchers have reported questionnaire usage in published work. Uh, and basically said, how transparent is this reporting from a scale of zero to eight, which is the eight criteria that I've identified, which are yes, no criteria. They're quite easy to sort of skim through. Um, and I've done this through a multidisciplinary lens, where basically each of these questionnaires that I find, I assign basically the origin discipline that they've come from. So was this made for like psychologists based on their theories, the media, education and, and games researchers? So I, you know, I went away, I went into my little my searches and I put in my little search term and I found 368 papers, <laughs> which was too many. And my, my, my search term was a little bit wide. So I sort of, I, I cut that down a lot because I'm looking for specifically the questionnaires which have the multiple dimensions for player traits, motivations, preferences, um, and only those to get me to 22. Though the astute um, may notice later I've included PENS, which is an experience questionnaire from um, psychology, but I have seen its use as a trait scale. So therefore I have included it as also because it's a very widely used questionnaire. And of those 22, 18 had actually been used by someone else. So therefore my set was the 18 you saw at the beginning. So I have these 18 questionnaires and I go, okay, uh, they've been cited 6,970 times. And you might think, surely Nathan, you did not go through 6,970 citations. Uh, I did not because ye and pens <laughs> are 4,000 of those citations which didn't include the fact that Yi has more than one version uh, and therefore even more citations. So I basically said, that's, that's too much. I'm gonna take the first 1,000 of both Yi and Pens and move forward and take everything else. So I actually ended up analyzing 4,587 papers. <laughs> Though shout out to Josephine Flockton who helped me with the Yi ones, uh, who basically took off a larger of my chunk of work just going through them to see if they had actually used a questionnaire because citing it doesn't mean that they've used it. So I took these, we, all, we, we had a very good time, months worth <laughs> of searching through all these, uh, these papers and we found that actually 270 had used one of these questionnaires in some way. Which is an interesting fact actually, if you think about it, that 270 papers out of 4,587 had used a questionnaire, which is about 6% of papers. And even within that, the top seven most used had been, have like had over 10 uses, was only this, this top seven here, which I sort of assigned, um, we've got here, which we've got a fairly nice mix actually of both psychology um, origins, game origins and media, although education being a smaller field and sort of more new didn't have enough of the citations, so I haven't really uh, analysed it further in this talk. But even within that, um, the top seven uh, is 91% of uses, and even within that, 53% is just from pens and ye, <laughs> so there's definitely a very quick cutoff um, that's happening. So I guess, well, there we go, transparency. Let's look at the numbers, you know? How are we doing? Um, I have to say the report, not great, which may have been uh, given away by the talk uh, headline being called Opaque Practices, because in an ideal world, you would hope that this would be 100% across the board, that the citation is correct, the point, the liquor points are correct. Um, you know, I can tell if you've dropped the items, this sort of thing. But you can see that there's a really steady decline down from yes, we're, we're quite good at, at correct citations, but we're very much not doing items available and also giving examples of items. And you can see the sort of, if you take that, um, the score out of eight is an average of about five, um, which I'd say is, it, it's not great. So you may also ask yourself, well, okay, then are we at least approving over time <laughs> in any way? Because obviously now this is a, over ooh, 15 years of questionnaires uh, I've looked at. And I also can sadly report no, because this is probably my most favorite correlation where there's absolutely nothing going on. Although if you took the means of each year, it's technically going down slightly, which is also not great. So I think if you ever do hear that, well, maybe we're improving over time argument, it's potentially not true, which is quite funny. But I also can say, obviously, I took the multidisciplinary lens to this, and I can report that the media studies people are actually doing the best, which 
it's actually quite clear if you look at the scores here because of overall they're at least a point on average higher. Um, as a psychologist, I'm happy to just not be last, even though I would say the difference between games and psychology is very small. But you can see what's going on is that that media one there is very, very close to the top. They're very, very good at reporting all of these sort of transparency measures, whereas everyone else is a little bit more spread out. And I'm going to pull up a very large graph here to sort of illustrate my point, which is that if you sort of break them down by this field again, you see these big blue lines, which is from media. It's basically because in media it's very common for items to be reported. And by extension, it means that you can actually see if items have been reworded because you can just compare them to the original. And I could spend all day just going through interesting facts, but I would say that really interesting bar going on for the correct citation for games is specifically because Yi has so many versions and especially because they're quite clustered on similar years, people very commonly miscite the wrong one, which is not great if you're trying to replicate or reproduce someone's work. So I can sort of like finish off my analysis stuff by saying I had some really fun things that, <laughs> that I found during this mammoth of a project. Um, sometimes people would had said we used Yi, when if you looked at the items, they had actually used the Trojan scale, which was just sort of amusing. Um, you have people saying at least twice, uh, please see our appendix for the items, but there is no appendix available, and I have I tried really hard to find it. Um, we used GAMS, which is a psychology one again. The same, they said exactly the same as the original, but when you looked into it, they had actually dropped an item, and therefore it's no longer the original scale. That's quite amusing. And maybe my favorite one, which was, we don't know why our reliability is so low. Maybe because the sample was French, as they were trying to say that it's not the same sample that the original questionnaire was coming from. But what had actually happened is that they had completely rewritten the items. <laughs> they were not the same in any way. So these, you know, these sort of four examples are, are amusing to me, and I hope they're sort of amusing to you. But it kind of pulls out an important question, which is, how much can we trust authors of non-transparent work? if the only reason I could find this is because they had given me the items and therefore I caught these interesting things. But that means that of all the papers I looked at, it's possible that the scores are actually lower across the board. So I guess, you know, conclusions and advice, what now I've <laughs> with, my, with my findings? I basically would argue that we have to be a bit more forward thinking when we're reporting our methods. It's not just about what I've done in the moment, it's what will future researchers do with this work? How will they improve our field? from what I have reported. And therefore, how can I do it in a, make it clear, like it make it easier for them to actually be able to reproduce aspects of this work. And on top of that, push for items to be published because if we're running at about 32% of papers with items available, the transparency is just not there yet. And as because there's 18 questionnaires at least available, it would be very much nicer to see a justification for each specific one as to why, because there's basically there's just there's too many to not. So I sort of end here with my checklist again, um, sort of saying all these things that I think are important um, transparency points. So I cannot see anything going on on my screen, but if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take some.